Hey guys, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I am making three Instant Pot recipes that can be made into freezer meals. So I'm Kristen, I am sister number two from SixSisterStuff.com. I'm the sister who runs the YouTube channel. The other sisters have other things that they're in charge of, so that's why you get to see me twice a week. Every Monday for Instant Pot Monday and every Thursday or Friday for other fun videos that I have going on. Now let's go back to our freezer meals. So I don't sit down and make a ton of freezer meals at once. I like to make a recipe for my family and then also make a recipe with the freezer meal. So the same recipe, I just double it so then I can save it for a week that's going to be wild. Today I'm sharing with you three easy freezer meals that could be for either the Instant Pot or the slow cooker. Now before I get started showing you these awesome freezer meals, make sure you subscribe to our channel and of course push that little bell to get all the notifications every time we post, especially if you love Instant Pot recipes. Be sure to check us out every single Monday for a new Instant Pot recipe or recipes. Let's head on over to my kitchen and let's make some Instant Pot freezer meals. The first recipe is called 7 Can Taco Soup. So first you're going to start with one can of chicken and dump it right in. Then one can of pinto beans, one can of black beans. Now my beans have been rinsed and drained. Next is one can of corn, but don't drain that. You're going to dump that right into your Instant Pot. Then we're going to have one can of diced red tomatoes. Dump everything in. You don't want to drain that either and then one can of enchilada sauce. Now I usually use mild enchilada sauce because my kids don't like it spicy. Next we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth and I have a little helper. She really wanted to help. And then for the seasoning, you're gonna add either one packet of taco seasoning or about two to three tablespoons. However much seasoning you like, you can add a little bit more. Then you're just gonna take a spoon and mix it all together. Now you don't have to use canned chicken, you can use normal chicken breasts. Just make sure you cook it accordingly. If you use canned chicken, you're going to cook it for 4 minutes on manual. If you have raw chicken, you're going to go up to 15 minutes. Now when I do freezer meals, I don't whip up a ton of them at one time. I make one recipe and then I make the same exact recipe and stick that in the freezer. So my trick is I like to use a water pitcher and put a plastic freezer bag just right inside of it. So I'll just do my same steps. A can of chicken, two cans of beans that are rinsed and drained, then you're going to add your can of corn, remember leave the juice in there, can of diced tomatoes, and then one can of your enchilada sauce. Now it's going to get a little bit full, it will seep down just a little. Add your taco seasoning, and then you're going to add your two cups of chicken broth. Now if you are making this meal to go in your slow cooker, you're going to cook it for three to four hours on low. Now you can cook it frozen or thawed, it doesn't really matter. Now once all my ingredients are in there, I'm going to slowly wiggle it out and zip it up. Now before I put it in my freezer, I'm going to mix it a little bit, then take out any excess air that I possibly can get out of there. Now I like to store my freezer meals so they will lay flat and then I can stack them on top of each other. But if you want to freeze it so it will fit inside of an instant pot, put it back inside your pitcher and go ahead and freeze it just like that inside your freezer. Alright, my soup is done cooking. I did a quick release just to make it a little bit faster and then I mix it up. I like to serve this with sour cream, cheese, green onions, pretty much everything you have on tacos, that's what you can put on top of this. Recipe number two is country style barbecue ribs. Now this is a little bit of a different kind of barbecue recipe because you're making a homemade barbecue sauce. So the trick about these is to get the country style ribs. Then you're just going to take some tongs and put in all of your ribs right inside and right in the bottom of your instant pot. You can also make this recipe in the slow cooker. I'm going to put the link in the description for you for the recipe for that. To add some extra liquid, I'm adding a half a cup of water and then a half a cup of brown sugar. 
Now this recipe calls for one tablespoon of Old Bay seasoning. If you don't have any Old Bay seasoning, you can totally take that seasoning out and it will still taste delicious. Next you're going to add one teaspoon of liquid smoke. You do not want to skip this step because liquid smoke makes it taste so good. So on top of that, you're going to add one and a half cups of ketchup. Now I'm horrible, I hate measuring ketchup, so I kind of just eyeball it. Then when you're done, you're going to add a half a cup of vinegar right on top of everything. Next you're going to put your lid on, seal it closed, and make sure that the knob is on sealing, not venting. I pushed the meat stew button and then I'm going all the way down to 30 minutes. While that cooks, I'm going to quickly show you how to make this for a freezer meal in the Instant Pot or slow cooker. Now when I make freezer meals, I always like to add my meat very first. It's usually the heaviest and I like it to sink to the bottom. Next you're going to add the half cup of brown sugar and then I use the same measuring cup and did a half cup of vinegar. Then eyeball it again, one and a half cups of ketchup, and then it calls for a half a teaspoon of liquid smoke, but I like to add a full teaspoon. Next add your one tablespoon of Old Bay seasoning if you want to, no pressure there. And then you're going to just seal it up. That's how quick and easy it is to make. That's why I love making my normal meal and then make doubling it and sticking the other part into the freezer. When you're done, you're just gonna pull it out, zip it up, and try and get the air out of it. Now before I put it in the freezer, I like to mix it around a little bit to make sure that all the juice is at least touching the meat. Now you can lay it flat and stick it in the freezer, or you can get all of the air out, and I like to put it back into the pitcher, and then when it's ready to stick into the Instant Pot, I can just pull that out and throw it in. All right, it looks like my ribs are done. Now I let it release on its own, so I'm gonna push it to venting, but it should be done venting and pull off the lid. If you're in a hurry, you can also do a quick release with this recipe. And then I put a little bit of sauce on top before I serve it. It is so good. Now the last recipe is my salsa verde chicken. Now I'm making this for a friend, so I'm actually not gonna put it in the Instant Pot. I'm just gonna make the freezer meal. Now you're gonna use the same steps you would using a slow cooker or an Instant Pot. So just follow along what I'm gonna do. You can put it right into your pot. So I'm just going to start with my Dollar Tree pitcher, put my bag right over top so it makes it so easy to fill up my freezer bag. So I'm going to add four chicken breasts. Now these ones are frozen. So four chicken breasts into my bag. Then I'm just going to add one jar of the Salsa Verde Salsa. Now you can get this in any brand, really kind of any size. You want about a medium sized jar. Then you're gonna add right on top of it two cups of chicken broth. Then add half a teaspoon of cumin. Then I like to add just a little bit of garlic salt for taste. You can use normal salt too. I just love garlic salt. And that is it for your salsa verde chicken. I mean, you can add other things too, such as onions or green chilies, but if you're looking for a very simple, easy recipe that you can throw together in a matter of minutes, this is it. So now that I've sealed it up, I'm going to mix it around a little bit and lay it flat so it can lay flat in my freezer. Now don't forget to get all the extra air out so it will lay flat and give you some extra room. Now you're gonna cook this recipe, if it's all thawed, on manual for 20 minutes. Then let it release on its own, or if you're in a hurry, you can do quick release, but usually with meat, I tend to let it release on its own. Now, for the slow cooker recipes of this, I'm going to put a link in the description of all three recipes for you. Now, the fastest way to cook these Instant Pot freezer meals is to put your freezer meal in the fridge the night before so it's a little bit thawed by the time you get to cook in it. But if you are in a hurry and you need to pull it out of the freezer and throw it right in the Instant Pot, Maybe throw it in the microwave for a minute or so to get a little bit of liquid. It will make it pressurize a lot faster. And because it is frozen, you might need to do it an extra five minutes, depending on the chicken, depending on how frozen it is. You just need to keep an eye on it. But my best advice would be put it in the fridge, let it thaw, and then cook it. 
All right, guys, I hope you have a great day. We'll see you later.